Hello, and welcome to a guide to creating your own coat of arms using Asgars or Moria. When you open up this program, you will be met with a gallery of randomly generated coat of arms on shields or banners. You should first take a look at the buttons on the top bar. This is your main menu for the program. To quickly run through these, reroll will regenerate the entire gallery you have, save will save this current gallery as either a single complete PNG or JPEG image, or as separate vector images of each coat of arms. Vector images are the recommended format if you want to import your coat of arms back into this program or into Asgard's Fantasy Map Generator or another supporting program. You can upload images like a saved coat of arms via the upload button so that they can appear on other coat of arms too. As it says, use raster for PNG, JPEG, or SVG, or use vector for SVGs that can be recolored. Next is localized language, license information, link to Asgard's Patreon, about tab, and an install button to download this program to run offline. Do note that it still relies on running in a browser program, though that is still possible offline. Now on to the options tab. This is your main tool while navigating this software. Options is where you can change the shield or shape type of your coat of arms, as well as determining the preset colors, image gradient, damasking, which adds a Damascus pattern to your images, change the gallery size, change the coat of arms borders, alter the program's background color, and change the relative size and detail of downloaded images, as well as the gallery's own zoom levels. Now, while you are met with a gallery of pre-generated coat of arms, you can take any single coat of arms image and customize it. There are options here to regenerate the single image, delve into the customizer interface, and download as a PNG. If you want to start from scratch, I would pick the simplest image you can find and delete any additions I might have. There's a trash can button next to each additional object added to the coat of arms. Now let's work our way from the top, the recommended order. The first category is the field or background of the coat of arms. You can change its color as well as add patterns through this drop-down menu. You can additionally adjust the size of the patterns themselves. It is best to customize this with colors you can clearly differentiate, even if you plan to change them later on. Next is the division. The division is typical in coat of arms that represents multiple families, nations, or countries. When adding a division, you can again customize its field separately from the original field. Patterns are available and just as customizable as before. Next is adding objects. There are three main types of objects to add to the coat of arms. Ordinaries which are mainly plain shapes, charges, which are central images, and inscription, which is just the words. Starting with ordinaries, you can firstly select what type of shape you would like and then further customize its style and color. Amori gives you a lot of different styles that can change your art ordinary from just having straight lines. You can also preview the other ordinaries in these styles as well. When you have your desired ordinary, you can drag it around as well as adjust its size and rotation in this bottom submenu. Technically, you can craft just about any image you wish if you wanted to use enough ordinaries, but in lieu of that, next is charges. Charges work in about the same way, and there are plenty of options to choose from. If you are looking for a specific option, you can use the upload option as discussed before, and you can find the images under their own menu. Do note that if you reload the page or return to the program, these uploads are not kept. Please make sure to save all progress and save frequently. I again recommend using the SVG vector format, but also saving as a PNG or JPEG can't hurt. All charges use three-tier coloring system and can be dragged around just like ordinaries. The best part about charges, however, is the preset positioning system. You'll notice a sub-menu with random letters in it. This menu uses preset positions that you can see when clicking on it and provides a bunch of preset destinations as well. But don't fret about trying to locate the right combination of these letters. You can also just type in the letters yourself and the charges will be added to reflect. If you want to add different sizes, you must add another charge. Inscriptions work just like any other text in any program. You can change the font, size, bolding, italics, etc. Inscriptions also nicely pair with the ornament style and charges. Lastly, you can change the layering and cropping of all the elements on the coat of arms. You can upload any image to this program, though one really cool feature is downloading a coat of arms, either one that you've made or one that you just really like, 
and then re-uploading it through raster. If you wanted to be able to change colors, I upload it through vector charge. Then I'm going to change the shape of my coat of arms. Then go to edit any image and it should appear under the charges uploaded category. Just like that. You can create some cool combinations by having designs within designs and it's better to manage overall. If you wish to upload a vector charge that can change its colors, Asgard provides a template that you can download from the upload menu. This template provides a very basic shape that you can change aspects of or to translate into your own image. To explain this code and vector images would warrant an entirely different tutorial and that one I am presently prepared to explain. There are links to W3Schools explanations and I highly recommend these. W3Schools explains these features very well and in a very logical fashion. Lastly, you can upload these coat of arms to Asgard's fantasy map generator by navigating to a state or berg and clicking the upload button. These take the SVG format of your coat of arms and will change the state or berg accordingly. Be sure to save or else the coat of arms will be reverted. That's all I got for this tutorial. Feel free to ask questions in the comments or on the Discord server linked in the description below. Let me know if you'd like further detail on any other aspects.